they uh, uh, demand uh, at least certain adaptation policies. And it's also important to, of course, mention the positive health effects of climate change. Uh, it's likely that there will be less, less cold stress, more heat stress will to some extent be balanced by less cold stress. What the, the balance between the two is, is actually unclear. And even if there is a certain compensating effect by less cold stress, that does not diminish the urgency of adaptation policies because uh, if there is a possibility to prevent uh, the negative health effects of heat stress, then we should certainly grab that opportunity. These are non-trivial but not dramatic effects and it's important to mention that um, the effects on population health are likely to be much larger in low-income tropical countries. Currently the estimate of uh, the effects of the number of excess deaths due to climate change worldwide are in the order of 100,000 excess deaths on a yearly basis and 95% of these I hope for more climate change for you. 95% um, of these excess deaths um, are actually in low-income countries and not in countries like the Netherlands, which uh, together with other high-income countries is actually responsible for uh, the greenhouse gas emissions that uh, are currently um, leading to these um, health effects. So these are the main conclusions of our review and I'll now turn to the third part of my presentation which is related to the policy uh, implications of all these uh, changes. And I'll start with some of the adaptation options and then spend a few minutes on mitigation efforts. For each of these um, areas that I've reviewed, um, it's not so difficult actually to think of the adaptation options that uh, we have at our disposition. For example, to prevent the health effects of heat stress, it's possible to change building regulations in order to, um, to have better climate control within houses. It's also possible to implement more cooling systems, for example, in nursing homes where many people who are sensitive to the effects of heat stress uh, live. Uh, help heat warning systems can be implemented and we can also guide people to prevent dehydration by taking um, adequate precautionary measures for example by drinking sufficiently during uh, periods of heat stress and similarly for allergies it's easy to list a number of regulations that could be uh, considered um, to uh, prevent allergic conditions as a result of the lengthening of pollen seasons um, it's possible to, um, to, to um, uh, eliminate the, the trees or the shrubs that are uh, most often responsible for the pollen that people are allergic to. Uh, it's not too difficult to actually change the, 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 the planting of parks and streets in cities to reduce the exposure to pollen. And so we can implement air filtering systems or have education campaigns or instruct people to take anti-allergy drugs to, uh, to, to adapt ourselves to these health risks of climate change. And not, I'll not go through all these options. Um, uh, I think these health risks of climate change are likely to be manageable. We can think of possible adaptation options quite easily but at this stage we don't yet know exactly what works and what doesn't work and uh, one of the the main recommendations from our report is actually that um, the uh, effectiveness of these adaptation options uh, uh, need to be investigated much more carefully than we currently can and one important example of that is the national heat plan that the Netherlands has developed in response to the heat wave of 2003, um, it took us three or four years to develop this heat plan together between national and local governments, the Netherlands Red Cross and healthcare organizations. It's a plan that consists of uh, a number of different devices, including uh, an elaborate warning system, a warning system that starts by 
warning one week in advance the healthcare system when there is a risk of a period with temperatures above 27 degrees centigrade and when this period comes nearer and nearer widening circles of um, people will be warned uh, in the last stage the population as a whole will be warned for uh, the heat wave uh, and will be instructed to uh, to change personal behavior and protect themselves against it it's a collaboration between municipal health services, general practitioners, nursing homes, volunteer organizations, and the whole plan um, has actually been summarized on a fan, a symbolic <laughs> fan that um, lists the instructions that uh, healthcare workers and the general public should adhere to during heat waves. And while all these measures sound plausible, we actually don't know whether they will really work, and there is an urgent need for uh, more careful evaluation of uh, all these adaptation options and to determine which of them are really effective so that we will spend our money on the things that really work. And um, that is why we have actually advocated uh, a research agenda uh, to better come to grips with the health effects of climate change. Um, We've constructed a research agenda that we recommended to the Dutch government uh, in this area, consisting of four broad uh, areas of research. Uh, we think that there is a lot of scope for more empirical studies to investigate the current health effects of a number of aspects of climate change. It's possible to uh, increase our understanding of how, for example, um, climate affects uh, uh, the pollen season and how the pollen season affects uh, allergic conditions by doing further empirical studies in the Netherlands or in hotspots elsewhere uh, that will uh, increase our understanding of how climate change affects health. But for the longer term that will not be sufficient. In the longer term climate will change beyond the uh, current range of variation that we are observing and we think that there is a need for more elaborate scenario studies that will help us to understand the long-term health risks of climate change. In addition to better understanding how climate change will affect human health, uh, we think that's also necessary, as I have already mentioned, to develop uh, more evidence-based adaptation strategies to investigate the effectiveness of prevention or treatment of the health effects. Um, We've listed a number of specific priorities, not only focusing on the effects of heat warning systems, but also, for example, on the effectiveness of uh, guidelines for preventing Lyme disease. And then, in the end, of course, uh, even more important than developing good adaptation strategies is to uh, uh, develop good mitigation strategies. And, uh, here we have uh, mentioned the special responsibility of the healthcare system to set a good example in, uh, for example, reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. We think that healthcare should be one of the first uh, societal institutions to contribute to less climate change by uh, looking at its own ecological footprint and reducing its own carbon dioxide emissions. But in order to achieve that, more research will be necessary on how uh, sustainable healthcare practices <coughs> can be developed. That brings me to the broader area of uh, mitigation of how uh, the Netherlands and other countries can uh, prevent further climate change. And that's why I'd like to end on a review, a brief review of Dutch mitigation policies in the field of climate change. I don't think we lead the world there at all. We have been quite modest actually in this area. But the current government is aiming for a 30% reduction of greenhouse gas emissions uh, until the year 2020 as compared to the year 1990 in line with broader EU policies in this uh, area um, to be reached by a doubling of energy savings to 2% per year over that period and by increasing the proportion of renewable energy from 2 to 20% and um, 
I know that uh, New Zealand already has reached 55%, I was informed. Uh, so you see that this is actually quite, quite modest.